Welcome to our fifth laboratory session. Today we are going to find the hysteresis loss in a ferromagnetic material which is taken in the form of a rod when it is taken through a complete cycle of magnetization. So, uh, the apparatus required are a solenoid, a ferromagnetic specimen rod, a reversible key that is a commutator, an ammeter to find the current in the circuit, a deflection magnetometer to find the magnetic field intensity and uh, a battery, a compensating coil, a rheostat to adjust the uh, value of uh, current in the circuit and connecting wires. So this is the circuit. Let me show you the components. We have uh, a battery, an ammeter, this you call it as a commutator or a reversing key. This is the rheostat which is used to adjust the value of current in the circuit and uh, this you call it as a solenoid uh, which is having you can uh, see it here at the bottom. It is written as 29.5 turns per centimeter, right? So the coil has 29.5 turns per centimeter and uh, this is the magnetometer and uh, this one represents the circular coil. Let us uh, see the circuit here. So in commutator we have four uh, terminals, one terminal is given to the positive of the battery and uh, the opposite terminal on the commutator is connected to an ammeter and the other side of ammeter is connected to the upper side of a rheostat and the lower terminal in the rheostat is connected to the negative of the battery. This is your uh, uh, primary circuit. So we have, uh, see here, this is the commutator. In the commutator, we have this uh, two opposite uh, terminals. This terminal is given to the ammeter and from the ammeter, it is given to the uh, top of the top terminal of the rheostat and from the bottle ter bottom terminal of the rheostat, it is given to the uh, negative of the battery and from the positive of the battery, you are uh, giving a connection to the uh, opposite end of the commutator. We have two more opposite terminals in the commutator one end of which is connected with the solenoid here and uh, other end of the solenoid is connected to the circular coil here. Here we have a circular, two terminals in the circular coil. One terminal is connected to the solenoid and the other terminal is connected to the opposite side of your commutator, reversing key, right? So uh, this connects your primary circuit, right? This uh, is given to the negative of your battery. This is given to the negative of your battery and the opposite terminal is given to the ammeter and from the ammeter it is given to the top terminal of the rheostat and the opposite bottom terminal is given to the positive of the battery, right? This gives you the primary circuit and in the secondary circuit two terminals in the reversing key, the remaining two terminals in the uh, commutator, one terminal is given to uh, solenoid, the other terminal in the solenoid is connected with the circular coil that is compensating coil. Other end of the compensating coil is connected with the opposite end of this uh, commutator. Right? This is the circuit connections we have. Uh, while doing experiment, you need to uh, keep your uh, magnetometer in the north-south direction and you have to keep your apparatus in the north-south direction, exactly in north-south direction and you have to keep a magnetometer at a proper distance from the solenoid and this magnetometer uh, like you have to place this magnetometer in such a way that the zero zero of this magnetometer is parallel to the length of this uh, arrangement right you need to uh, keep the magnetometer in such a way that the zero zero is parallel to the length of this apparatus this wooden board and then you can uh, place a co compensating coil here and uh, you can switch on your battery. After switching on the battery, current will be passed through the solenoid. Due to the passage of current in the solenoid, there will be some magnetism that is created and uh, due to that magnetism, there will be some deflection in this uh, magnetometer. To nullify the deflection in the magnetometer that is produced due to the magnetism caused by the current flowing through this solenoidal wire, we can make use of the compensating coil. If you see the uh, 
direction of magnetism that is magnetization that is produced in the solenoid as well as in the uh, compensating coil they will be opposite in direction so in order to nullify the deflection that is produced by the magnetism that is created in the solenoid due to the passage of current can be done with the help of this compensating coil you can move this compensating coil in such a way that the deflection in the magnetometer becomes zero so after switching on your battery current will be passed through this solenoid due to the current passed in the solenoid a magnetism will be created due to that magnetism this magnetometer will show you some deflection in order to nullify that deflection you make your compensating coil you move your compensating coil in such a way that you are making the deflection in the magnetometer to be zero zero again then you can uh, take your ferromagnetic material and you can place it over here into the solenoid now the ferromagnetic material is placed inside the solenoid there is a ferromagnetic rod as you can see here this ferromagnetic rod is inserted into the solenoid so this solenoid will create a magnetic field a concentrated magnetic field along its axis in which now we have the ferromagnetic rod so this ferromagnetic rod will get magnetized and due to the magnetization of the ferromagnetic rod there will be a deflection in the magnetometer right check this deflection is between 30 to 45 if your deflection goes beyond 45 you just move this uh, magnetometer a little away from the solenoid and if the deflection comes below 30 you just move it towards the solenoid so that the deflection uh, ends up between 30 to 45 now i am passing a maximum current here see the amount of current that is passed here is equal to 1 amperes and uh, our deflection magnetometer shows the value as you can see here it is equal to 34 right theta 1 is equal to 34 and theta 2 is equal to 36 right so uh, we have to change the value of current and this is the formula to be used here 4 pi he tan theta divided by pi r square d into 1 by d square minus d by d square plus l square power 3 by 2 ampere meter so here this d represents the horizontal distance between the specimen and the magnetometer there uh, there is a scale to measure uh, the distance of this magnetometer from the solenoid right so this is at the starting point of the solenoid and uh, you have to measure the distance to the center of the magnetometer to the center of the wooden box uh, you can keep it at a whole value say for example if it is at 15 centimeter you can take this uh, d that is the horizontal distance between the specimen and the magnetometer as 15 into 10 power minus 2 meter and l represents length of the specimen rod this is the length of the ferromagnetic rod you can measure it using a scale later after completing the experiment and n represents number of turns per unit length of the solenoid which is uh, given at the bottom of the solenoid as we had seen it is equal to 29.5 turns per centimeter so uh, you need to convert it to uh, turns per meter then the H, he represents horizontal component of earth's magnetic field which is equal to 30.24 ampere turns per meter and theta represents angle of deflection in the magnetometer r radius represents of the sorry radius of the ferromagnetic rod uh, you can measure the radius of the ferromagnetic rod after completing the experiment using a screw catch now this is the table you need to fill you need to change the value of current and you have to check what is the deflection in the magnetometer one end is theta one you can take the other end of the needle as theta two and uh, let me show you a sample calculation here see the value of uh, current is varied from plus two right it it is decreased to 1.5 you can check the variation in the magnetometer values when the current is decreased the magnetometer value is also getting decreased when the current is made equal to zero there is some magnetization that is retained in the specimen which is the characteristic of a ferromagnetic material and this property you call it as hysteresis that is the magnetization that is developed within the specimen is lagging behind the magnetic field if you give magnetic field the material is getting magnetized but if you remove the field when it is at zero when the current is at zero the field does not become zero but it retains some magnetism which is shown by the deflection in the magnetometer now you can reverse the commutator you can use the reversing key to change the direction of the current and uh, then you can increase uh, the value of current 
as minus 0.5, minus 1, 1.5, etc. If you pass the current in opposite deflection, opposite side, the magnetization becomes 0 somewhere between this 0 to 0 0.5. And for minus 0 0.5, it increases to 50. You have to increment the value of current by 0 0.5. So the value, the maximum value in the reverse direction is minus 2, for which the deflection in the magnetometer is 71. Then again, you are decreasing the value of current, and minus 1.5, minus 1, 0 0.5, and 0. Now again, you can see in the opposite direction also, even if the magnetic field, the current that is given to magnetize the specimen becomes zero, the magnetization that is uh, in the specimen is not becoming zero. It retains a magnetism within it and uh, that is what you call it as residual magnetism or retentivity. And uh, again, you are uh, using the reversing key to change the direction of current. You are incrementing it again from 0 to 0 0.5, 1, 1.5 and 2.0 so that you are making the ferromagnetic material to undergo a complete cycle of ma magnetization and demagnetization, right? So from plus 2 to uh, 0, you are just demagnetizing it and uh, from minus 0 0.5 to minus 2, you are magnetizing it in the opposite direction and uh, again from 2 to 0, you are demagnetizing it. And from 0.5 to uh, plus 2, you are just uh, magnetizing it in the uh, opposite direction, right? So you are making the ferromagnetic material to go through a complete cycle of magnetization and you are noting down the value of deflection in the deflection magnetometer for each value of current. Let us uh, check whether the value of uh, deflection magnetometer changes. Now, as I told you already, the value of uh, theta 1 is almost 35 and the value of theta 2 is almost 36, right? So we need to write for 1.5, you need to write here as 35 and here as 36, right? Now, you can change the value of current here. The current is uh, actually 1. Let me increment to 1.5. So this is the maximum value I get. So let me increment by increasing, by changing the position of the rheostat. Let me increase the value of current to 1.5. So the current is now 1.5. Let us check the deflection in the magnetometer. Before checking the deflection, you can gently tap on the center of your magnetometer so that if the magnet got struck, it will come into position. So now, as you can see here, as the value of current is increased, the magnetization in the specimen increases and hence the deflection also increases. Now the value is equal to 38 theta 1 is equal to 38 and theta 2 is equal to 39, right? So you can note it here. So in a similar way, you can note the values for, uh, values from plus 2 to uh, 0 and again to minus 2, again to 0, again to plus 2, right? So you can vary the current like this in steps of 0.5 using the rheostat and checking the value of current in ammeter you can always observe the value of theta 1 and theta 2 in the deflection magnetometer. You can take average of these two values that will give you theta average and you can find tan theta, right? You can use a calculator to find the tan value of 70 degree that will give you 2.747. Similarly, you can find tan theta for all the other values. And here uh, we have uh, another table to find the radius of the specimen. You need to use a screw catch and keep the specimen at uh, three different places of your screw catch and you can measure what is the value, you can uh, observe what is the value of pitch scale reading and head scale coincidence, calculate what is the value of observed reading and uh, correct reading. This will give you the mean value of these three values will give you the diameter of the ferromagnetic rod from which you can easily find what is the radius of the ferromagnetic rod and you can simply substitute everything over here to find what is the energy loss. So let me show you the graph here. Here is the graph we have. So you need to take this i along x-axis and tan theta along y-axis. If you do a graph, see you need to increment it by 0.5. So 0, 0.5, 0 0.75, 1, 1.25, 1.5, 1.7, 1 and 2. And uh, this is the value of uh, theta. So theta is, I mean value of tan theta, so it was varied like this. And if you plot, plot a graph, you can uh, get uh, this type of curve. 
So what it represents is when you increase the magnetic field, the magnetization in the specimen increases. But when you decrease the field to zero, the magnetization of the specimen decreases, but it does not become zero. This you call it as retentivity or residual magnetism. That is the magnetism that is retained within the specimen, even if the magnetic, uh, sorry, applied magnetic field is zero, that is the current is zero, that you call it as retentivity or residual magnetism. And to make this residual magnetism or retentivity to come to zero, you need to uh, pass current in the opposite direction. So the value of current that is passed in this direction to make this uh, residual magnetism to become zero, you call it as coercivity. And if you still increase the amount of current, the magnetization in the specimen also increases. It reaches a maximum value over here and then it becomes saturated. What it means is all the domains had rotated to the field direction at this point. And uh, if you increase the current after this point, it will reach a saturated value. Right? There won't be any increase in the magnetization even if you increase the current. The, what it means is the all the domains in the ferromagnetic specimen has oriented in the direction of the uh, applied magnetic field and hence you cannot expect increase uh, more, right? So when you decrease the amount of current, the magnetization in the specimen also decreases. Even if you make the current to become zero, the magnetism is retained, some magnetism is retained in the opposite direction. Again, it is called as retentivity or residual magnetism. To make this residual magnetism to become zero, we are applying current in the opposite direction. So the amount of current that is applied in the opposite direction to make this retentivity to become zero is called coercivity. And again, you are increasing the current in the same direction, which increases the magnetization of the specimen and it traces a closed loop, right? This loop, you call it as hysteresis loop. And since B or uh, this tan, tan theta, it uh, represents the intensity of magnetization. And this I, I can equate it to the applied magnetic field. So the intensity of magnetization or the magnetization that is uh, retained, sorry, that is developed in the specimen is uh, lagging behind the applied magnetic field. That is what you call it as hysteresis. So from the area of the curve, you will be able to find what is the energy loss. You need to use the X scale as well as Y scale to calculate the energy loss in the specimen using this formula. We have a formula to calculate energy loss. So this is the formula to calculate energy loss in a specimen. K into N into area of the loop into X axis scale into Y axis scale. So we have uh, the value of K as uh, found from this equation. Here H0 represents Earth's magnetic field. R represents radius of the specimen. D1 represents uh, uh, the horizontal distance. And you can calculate, uh, if you want to use this formula, you can calculate uh, D2 also. There is a formula for uh, D2 calculation, see here. So this represents D1 and uh, this represents the value of D2. D2 is nothing but D1 is the horizontal distance between the solenoid and the magnetometer. The horizontal distance between the solenoid and the magnetometer, you call it as D1 and this represents D2. The other end of the solenoid, distance between other end of the solenoid to the magnetometer. So you will be able to measure this distance D1 from the scale that is given with the apparatus and D2 can be found from the formula that is D2 is equal to root of D1 square plus L square. So the value of D1 square is given here, L square is given here. So you can calculate easily what is the value for D2, sorry D1, no D2 and K is equal to 16 pi H0 R square D1 1 by D1 cube minus 1 by D2 cube into 10 power minus 7. H0 is a constant value, pi is also a constant value R is the radius of the specimen which you have found out using screw cards. D1 is the horizontal distance between the solenoid and the magnetometer. D2 you can calculate from this formula. D2 is equal to root of D1 square plus L square where L represents length of the ferromagnetic specimen. Right? From this you can calculate what is the value for K and uh, you can al always find the value of K tan theta and this tan theta, this uh, value of uh, uh, tan theta can be the maximum value. We can uh, take uh, the maximum value here. Right? You have already calculated the value of uh, tan theta. You can take the maximum value and you can put it here to find the value of I. And if you want to find uh, the value of coercivity, this is the formula. K into OC into x-axis scale. OC is nothing but 
this represents oc this o this is your c so this represents oc and x axis scale you have written here similarly for finding retentivity you have to calculate this ob from this point you need to calculate what is this right this represents ob to calculate retentivity you need to measure this distance and you have to multiply it with the y axis scale so this is what coercivity is k into oc into x axis scale retentivity is k into ob into y axis scale and energy loss can be found from the value of k which we have uh, calculated earlier this n represents number of uh, turns per uh, meter length of your uh, solenoid this area of the loop area of the loop can be calculated from the graph you need to measure how many squares are there right that many number of squares into x axis scale into y axis scale that will give you area so that is the area of the loop and uh, that will give you what is the energy loss so with this formula you will be able to calculate what is the energy loss in the specimen when you take the specimen through a complete cycle of magnetization so this is how we need to do this experiment determination of hysteresis loss in a ferromagnetic material thank you